It's the most desperate thing you've ever seen, okay? Because it happens slowly, people really don't get a full picture of, of, of what we're dealing with, but wounds uh, are probably the, the, the window into all other biofilm diseases. Wounds are just, uh, uh, they're insidious and, and they lull you to sleep. But here's what happens, Let's, it affects lots of different people for lots of different reasons. Over 4 million new wounds every year, probably in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 million Americans have a chronic wound at any one time, so that's the prevalence. It's a big deal, okay? And the, the biggest deal on that is about 50,000 people die from those wounds, and that's like Christopher Reeves. So what we see here in wound care is somebody will get a wound, it'll grow a little bit, it'll wax and wane a little bit, then they lose a toe, then they lose a foot, then they lose their other leg, and then they lose their life. And I see that pattern over and over and over again and you know it's just not something you, you, you can watch too many times and then you say hey this is a big deal you know so the problem is chronic infections make people suffer but chronic infections also make people die when we looked at over 2,000 articles on medical biofilms and said you know what does it infect uh, what what kind of problems does it cause for that tissue system you know if it's a sinus or a heart valve or a, a colon or a, a prostate you know what what, it, what is it what are the problems and oh my gosh you know you th you don't think of a chronic sinus infection as, as a big deal yet over a hundred thousand sinus surgeries and almost two thousand people die every year of, of that sinus surgery and you go Whoa, you know, that, that's important. What kind of public policy do you need for that, okay? Uh, wounds, 50,000 die. Uh, uh, people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, somewhere around 50,000 die a year. Ventilator acquired pneumonia, uh, 67,000 die. And you add all those up and all of a sudden you got 500,000 people dying, but they don't just die, you know, they suffer from their chronic infection. They lose body parts and then they die. As far as culture, what are its limitations? How, how, do, how well does it identify bacteria? And then the new molecular methods, which everybody agrees, everybody at every level agrees that it, this has to go molecular for a number of different reasons. How accurate is it at the present time, okay? Uh, so l let's just start with culture, okay? Culture was developed 150 years ago by Robert Koch. 150 years ago, it's like in medicine, it, it's, it, you just can't even get your arms around. There, there was no telegraph. You know, trains were, were the mode of transportation. I mean, it's just, it, it was a different world then. And now you've got MRIs and atomic force microscopes and, and just, you know, electron beams. And, you know, think of the technology we have. And yet, okay, when, when, when my kid, when, when your kid gets their, their, infection and they go in to, to get evaluated, they're going to be evaluated by a technology that's 150 years old. Cultures gave me a microbial reality of, of one bacteria, a couple bacteria, and it was mainly a certain kinds like pathogens that you're talking about. You know, it'd be staph, it'd be strep, it'd be pseudomonas. Those were things I knew I had antibiotics for them. I was very comfortable with those. It wasn't, it wasn't changing the outcomes of these wounds, you know, it wasn't working. And so we wanted to go and start doing biofilm diagnostics. And I assumed we would pick up some other bacteria. The very first culture I got back is, is the slide I show in, 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 in our presentation. And, and it shows 63 different bacteria were in the wound that, that I looked at. That same wound was diagnosed with a culture, a growing culture, and it showed that that person had MRSA, okay? well. Our molecular showed that he had MRSA, but it was only 7% of all the bugs. And there were 62 other bacteria in there. I can't even say the names of 30 of them, okay? And there's anaerobes and, and gram-negative bacteria, and, and all of a sudden it dawned on, that was my epiphany. Uh, chronic infections, biofilm phenotype infections, are, that is the pathogen. The biofilm is a single entity. It's under central control by that quorum sensing signaling. At the end of the day, we said, okay, so that's the money we saved. We'll just say that's what we saved Medicare, just the money from the, of those prevented amputations, okay? Well, the average cost of, of molecular and, and doing the, uh, uh, getting the patient healed 
was somewhere around $2,500 per year. And some people took up to two years. Okay, the most expensive person outlier was seven thousand six hundred dollars to get their their wound healed. Okay, do you understand the difference in that? I mean, it, I think it ended up being about we, we saved Medicare somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty five uh, to uh, fifty times if you just count the amputations, not not anything else, fifty times savings uh, j just with that, and that is. I mean, that's the reality. If you can heal the wound in sight to and not take off body parts, it is so much more cost effective than starting to cut things off or replacing things. It's, it's just orders of magnitude more when you get into that. So healing the chronic infection in place, whether it's a wound or a sinus, whatever the chronic infection, is far more cost effective than any other strategy for managing that. And then so there's episodes, it wax and wanes, there's exacerbations, you treat it with antibiotics, but over time, the tissue degrades. So if it's the heart valve, it starts failing. If it's the sinus, it starts breaking down. If it's the wound, you start getting close to bone or tendon structures. And over time, uh, you have to do something about it. And the, me the medical management for biofilm independently in all these different specialties evolved to the same point. And what that, that evolution was, was we stripped the sinuses or, or we cut out the tonsils or we remove or replace the heart valve. Uh, we take out the I infected medical device. And so it's, it's taking things off. Or, or cutting things off. And you know, they say, is that right? Is that wrong? Is that good? Is that bad? That's not the question that you should ask yourself. If you're a clinician, you should ask yourself, is that what I want? Okay, is that the way I, I wanna meet the needs of my patient? They have a major sinus problem. Do I wanna strip those sinuses or do I, do I wanna cure the infection? Do I, do I wanna do a lung transplant in that kid with cystic fibrosis or do I wanna cure his bowel film infection? Do I wanna cut the leg off or do I wanna cure the wound? You know, it's, it's your decision and when you decide that, that's when the game is gonna change. If you're a patient, ask that about yourself, or if you're a family member, ask that about your kid or the family member that, 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 that has that chronic infection. How do you want them managed? Do you want a body part removed, okay? And that's what's gonna change things.